What is up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about helping you improve your mental health. And a big part of mental health is relationships and couples therapy and all of that good stuff. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. Because another thing I do is I pull things from the YouTube community and try to teach you how to improve your mental health. So I am actually live streaming right now, and I'm, I might interact with the people in the live stream, I don't know yet. But anyways, uh, Jason Nash and Trisha Paytas, I've done some videos on them in the past. Um, I made a video about Trisha Paytas showing some signs of borderline personality disorder. Um, I can't diagnose her. Some say that she was diagnosed. And Jason Nash. Um, and their relationship is kind of a hot mess. Uh, Trisha started going to therapy. Um, I have some opinions about that. I did a video about that. But uh yeah, they they just did two videos, one with Katie Morton, two videos with Katie Morton, one's on Jason Nash's channel, one is on uh, Katie's channel. So one's on Jason's, one's on Katie, all right? But anyways, so we're going to watch this, I'm going to react, um, just talk about the therapeutic process, what I like, don't like, dislike, just talk about some stuff. So let's get started. No, we've been talking about going to therapy oh. for a long time, so it makes sense. Yeah. Put those... Put those ads. Put those ads. What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. Uh, we're here with Trisha and we're here with Katie, who is a licensed therapist. She's been on my channel before. And today, we're going to do a live therapy session. Not live, but we're going to do a <laughs> therapy session right here. And um, I'm pretty nervous. I, mean, I just want to throw this in here. It, it's kind of hard. Like, I remember Katy Perry did, like, kind of for, like, mental health awareness. She did a, um, uh, she did, like, a lot, a, a therapy, she recorded a therapy session. It's, it's hard, it's hard because we don't know, we don't know necessarily if this is, like, real or a show. Are they really going to open up? Are they going, you know what I mean? Like, I can just see it being difficult to open up fully and do like a real therapy session and get out of like YouTuber mode when you're doing this. And like, I like that they're doing this to kind of show like do couples therapy. You know what I mean? But I just want everybody to keep that in mind as I'm going to try to keep that in mind is like, there's a, there's a possibility that we're not going to get full truth, full honesty and things like that just because it's being recorded and sent out to millions of people. <laughs> I'm feeling like Jake Paul right about now. <laughs> We've known each other for eight and a half since we were dating for 10 Why months. do you always say that? Well, I just want people to know because you're like, oh, we've only known each other 10 months. Well, we've actually hung out for a year and a half. That's that so long. Long. Yeah. Long. Yes, it does because we were hanging out in December, November, September. You know what I mean? We were Made hanging out. Yeah. Like December, we, we were, were going. We were this is going to be interesting, too, especially with all the stuff going on about Katie Morton um, and her backlash with the Shane Dawson stuff. So this is going This is going to be this is going to be interesting. I saw, I've seen Katie do some videos like this with others, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. For some of those months ago, right? Yeah, medieval times, Disneyland. <laughs> All that stuff was in early last year. I was in medieval times, so yes, I remember. Yes, yeah, see, that was December. I watched the vlog. Oh. <laughs> we brought Katie in to fix us up. No, I, am, I have faith in this. Okay, what are we talking about? So my first question, I guess, is to, and each of you can kind of take turns or add to this story, but how did you meet so it's been a year and a half since we met <laughs> yeah and then what made you start dating like how did you fall in love tell me your story one thing i one thing i will comment on is it's this is tricky too this is tricky because um katie morton's friends with a lot of youtubers right and like this like already just in the first minute 20 like like you see like kind of like her like bumping shoulders with like um, Trisha and joking, like, I'm not saying like me, I'm very, I'm very normal. Like I try to be normal when I'm, and I'm not a therapist, by the way, if I didn't say that I'm not a therapist, but when I'm like with people and I'm meeting one-on-one, -on -one, I just try to be me. But even when I'm trying to be me, there's still like this kind of separation of, you know, uh, facilitator client, you know what I'm saying? And I don't, I don't know. I'd be interested in like hearing my mom's thoughts on this. Like did like, is Katie a little too friendly you know what i mean like this might also this it's these are just things to keep in mind as you're watching this quote-unquote therapy session i think the way we met is probably a big reason for all of our problems which is i said to somebody oh i, I want to date a youtuber someone that will film with me all the time 
and then this other person said, oh, I know the perfect person for you. <laughs> you. Trisha, yeah. Trisha Paytas. And I was like, oh, who's Trisha Paytas? And, um, you know, I looked her up, and then we went, I went and hung out with her. She's great. First five minutes I was talking to her, I felt like I, I, I've known her for my whole life. Mm-hmm. Which is like, I really, yeah, yeah, really comfortable. And I don't get that with a lot of people at all. Usually, like, I'm very, like, yeah, like when we first did the video, I was like, you're so nervous. Like, yes. She's like fidgeting like crazy. Yeah, mm. I get very nervous and fidgety. And so with Trisha, I was like, it was almost like I knew her in another life or something. And she was very, very pretty in person and not like her, not like her videos or what I had seen from her videos at least of yeah. her, her being like, you know, telling yeah. everyone off and I, I do it like this. She was actually pretty normal and pretty grounded and, and, like, and, and really into having a good time. <laughs> which was fun. And by good time, I mean like, let's go buy these blueberry muffins, like, you know, or so whatever. <laughs> that's <laughs> a good time. That's a good time. <laughs> and that's probably the best thing about her is like she likes, um, she, she likes like pretty simple things. Like that's mm-hmm. really what makes her happiest. Like she loves going to this pasta place and walking across the street to the movies. Mm-hmm. That's like her, yeah. I, that's like her Just thing. Just a nice, a nice Yeah, yeah. So she's pretty simple, even though she's very complex. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. That's pretty much how it went. And then I guess, um, do we say like the bad part of it or no, or the good part? Or you want me to keep going? <laughs> well, then I mean, we just like, <laughs> no, I mean, then yeah, we hung I'm out. Therapy <laughs> Thank you. I know you should put this whole thing on. That's why we need to go to therapy because I feel like I can. No, but then no, it was good. Um, we hung out like that one time. Then I didn't hear from him for like, I like a month. Then I saw him again one time and then didn't hear from him for like a month then I saw him again for one time mm. I started like bawling and going crazy and he got scared of me and didn't call me for like months yeah oh okay that's a really interesting freeze frame right there like it, it god I you guys I'm trying so hard like I try I'm trying so hard to be unbiased like like I was just gonna like comment on like how Katie's like kind of laughing right there but like I do too I I laugh too like, I'm si- like, just because I struggle with my own mental illness, like, when I do crazy stuff, like, I laugh about it. And when other people do crazy stuff, I laugh about it, too. So, like, I'm not going to knock, I'm not going to knock Katie for that. I will not knock her for that. What I do want to talk about is, Trisha, when I made my video about, you know, is Trisha showing signs and symptoms of borderline personality disorder? What they're talking about right there, how she just met him. And then he didn't talk for a month. You know, they, they talked, didn't talk for a month, talked, didn't. And she like lost it. Like that is that intense emotional reaction that people get. Like very intense. So again, I'm not saying Trisha Paytas has borderline personality disorder. I don't know why I'm censoring myself because I have like 50 comments saying that she had admitted that she had it or got diagnosed with it. But anyways, I, don't, I haven't seen that. I don't have proof of that. So I'm just going to say. This is what symptoms of borderline personality disorder look like, is very intense, strong feelings. That's what we're talking about with black and white thinking. It's like, just, I love you, I hate you, right? I love you, like, I can't stop thinking about you, I need to be with you, da 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 And so, like, that's why my initial reaction to Katie was kind of like, eh, because, like, she's laughing, but, like, that's one of the signs of that specific mental illness. And then that's when December came around, which was so weird. I was dating someone else, and he started, like, that's when December was, like, he kept asking me to hang out with him, which I know was for vlog footage, but, like, it would just be me and him going to Disneyland, me and him looking at Christmas lights, me and him, you know, he's like, let's go ice skating, let's go, you know, all this stuff like that. And I was just like, okay. But you had a, you had a boyfriend at the time, so it was, it was, it was a good, it was a safe, <laughs> safe place for me. So I could be like, we were just friends. See, there's no pressure to there's date no right pressure away. to date her. There was no pressure for me to be like. But then you would say stuff, medieval time vlog, I'm going to reference it. Then you would say stuff like, you know, I really would want to date you, but, like, I just don't know. And I'm like, what do you don't know? And there was like a whole 15 minute conversation in your car about how you want to date me. You thought about dating me, but you didn't know. I, I, I maybe thought about it. Yeah. What didn't you know? Um, I, I think like, some of her. Some have you of, dated since your divorce? Not really. No. Okay. A little bit. Okay. Not really. And um, yeah, just just I guess uh, some of the highs and lows that she has, you know, I scare me, scared me. And most of the time, she's like perfect. And then sometimes. You know, when we fight and stuff, it's like scary, mm-hmm. scary fights, and like, and I, I don't know how to deal with that. Yeah. And then, um, and also like her, her job where she posts like certain things online. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't specifically have a problem with it. Like, it doesn't bother me. Like that stuff doesn't really bother me. Like, I choose like not to really think about it. But like for my kids. Oh, hold on. Let me listen. Like, I was like concerned about that. Okay. Like, oh, a little I, more protective. Right. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, well, I, I don't know if I can have. This is gonna be 
very problematic. As much as I liked her, it was, I knew it was going to be very problematic for me if I let her into my life. It hasn't been? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's true? What do you think oh, they did? Happens? They are cutting stuff. They are, they're actually cutting stuff. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Don't like it. Yeah, 100%. I mean, obviously, I actually don't know because I've always been, like, diagnosed with, like, different things, like borderline personality disorder, bipolar. Like, I've literally been called, I, someone... Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, everybody. Hold on. Let me replay that so I can hear it coming out of her mouth. No, because I've always been, like, diagnosed with, like, different things, like borderline personality disorder, bipolar. Like, I've literally been called... All right, okay, so I do not feel bad if I talk about Trisha Paytas having bi uh, borderline personality disorder. And by the way, um, go check out uh, Bipolar Pug. She made a video about borderline versus BPD. I mean, not borderline, but uh, bipolar versus BPD. Great video. Um, but anyways, like, here's the thing. I'm going to toot my own horn. I'm going to honkity honk 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 my own horn real quick. For all the comments that come through just like, you're not even a licensed professional, da da da. First off, I never claim to be. But second off, when you know about mental health, you can look at something from a distance and say, well, they're showing some of the symptoms. But I don't think you should run around diagnosing anybody. But I'm just saying, people who are educated in mental health and different diagnoses and things like that, like we are making like a well educated guess. Like it's like being a scientist. Scientists make hypotheses based on like the uh, what they already know about, you know, the situation, right? So, anyways back up off me I, someone told me that once i was like schizophrenic gave me like medication for it what? so like yeah when i was like 15 years old because i used to go to like do you see things that nobody else sees? no do you hear anything no or shapes i've been through all of it like okay. do you see animal figures in the dark and stuff like that and i was like no so like i used to take medications like as a kid from like 13 to like 18 of like all these different like things so i mean i'm sure there is something I don't, I'm on not any medications for like the past few years and okay. I feel more normal than ever. Probably. Having said that, like, I know what he's talking about the highs and lows. I don't really think of it as like bipolar or anything like that. I, it, honestly, it feels to me like I, I just have a really bad anger problem, which I know and I've like been able to control a little bit, but I have a really bad temper. The dating thing where he didn't want to call me his girlfriend, but we had just gone to Maui together and spent a whole week together. And I was like, wait, so why don't we, why aren't we dating? Like, what is the problem? Like that we hang out every day. It's like, why, why can't we be dating? Mm -hmm. So that was the other thing that I like. But we went to, but we went to, when we went to Maui, I was like, I, yeah, I'll go with you, but I more just want to hang around with friends. I don't want to date. But we weren't friends. It. Were you friends or were you like romantically involved? I mean, we were, but we were. It was kind of a, you know, a, a Jerrica kind of thing. <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah, but they're 19. We're 45 and 30. And so it's like at that point we were doing everything that was dating. The only thing I was thinking, because my biggest thing is like cheating or like him like wanting to date other people. And I just hate that in a relationship. And I, like we are hanging out like two months at this point, And I was just like okay, so you just don't want to be with me or you're looking for something better. Like, I was just so confused and I was like... And then when you would blow up at me, I would be like, oh, I don't want anything to do I hadn't blown up with you at that point. Huh? Her upset is warranted or do you think it's... No, she, yeah, yeah, I don't think it's warranted. I think I think she'll, she'll, she says things to me like, you you made me get angry. Like, and I'm like, no, no one should be that angry at mm. whatever I do. You know what I mean? Like, there's no, there's no reason for uncontrollable anger towards me. No have matter what ever, I do. Um, have it, either of you ever been in therapy? You've been in therapy. Yeah, it yeah. sounds like it. I've been in therapy my and whole you life. And you have too? Yeah. Have you heard of like I statements versus the blame game? I've blocked all the I've blocked all. I have heard I've heard <laughs> of that. <laughs> fair, fair enough, fair enough. No, that, but that's I, I have heard of that. Another therapy session. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the, the right. like you made me tends to like cause people to get defensive and shut down. Yeah. And so if we can say like I felt angry or I'm angry because I it would be important to me to feel like I'm your girlfriend because I'm afraid, you know, I, I have trust issues and it would make me feel more secure versus like you made me angry. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah everybody, that that's huge. And I am going to stop looking at the chat. Um, but that's huge, you guys. Like, like, this, like I statements are so big. Like, I, I hope you have all have seen my video about like quit blaming other people for your feelings. Like you you have to stop doing that. Nobody can make you feel a certain way. And what Trisha and Jason are talking about right now is how that back and forth happens and how a small thing turns into a huge thing. You made me angry. You made me feel this way. Like nobody can make you feel a certain way. You know what I mean? But anyways, I've talked about the whole thing in a video. So, so yeah, use I statements. Say, this is me. Like, when I've had to set up boundaries with people or let people know I'm upset, like I have to let them know it is me. 
it is me. It is the way that I am interpreting this. It is the way I am taking this. And then what that does is, is it opens up the other person to have an open dialogue because you're not using these words that are that are attacking. As soon as you use uh, words that seem attacking, immediately the person's uh, fight or flight mechanism is going off in their brain, their amygdala, and they're gonna wanna defend themselves and attack back. So using I statements helps defuse that. So good on you, Katie. I, I have other things to say, but I wanna see where this goes. Allows him to hear you versus like potentially shut down and feel attacked. Let's say we did break up. I was thinking like if we break up, I have to find someone that would want to like be with me and commit and like know him for a couple of years and like have kids and like to find that it's gonna take me years and then I'll be too old, you know, by the time it all happens. So part that by the way, that's that's future tripping. Like don't don't do that. I was like maybe I just shouldn't have kids. I don't know. I'm not like totally like I want him, but it's also like if he doesn't, I'm not gonna. She, she also she also tells sends me like really send me different messages so much. Mm -hmm. Like there's times when you're like. Really want kids, and then I've seen you other times be like, Oh my god, I could never do this. Well, you do the same thing with me though. Sometimes you're like, I could have one kid with you, maybe, and then you're like, I don't want kids. Look, this is so crazy because they were just like talking about this. They were just talking about this using I statements, right? And you know how it's just like, this is perfect. This is the perfect example of what I was saying. When you don't use I statements, the other person gets defensive. Look at Trisha's face right now. Look, look. So, Jason, right after that, Jason says, you, 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 you. And immediately, Trisha starts saying, you, 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 you. You guys see what I mean? Like, ah. But yeah, that's, that's, uh, you know, that's one of those things where it's like, I, you know, any of us who work in mental health and talk with people and stuff, like, we pay attention. Like, I'm like, wait a second. I just, I literally just told you something. Like, if it was me personally, and I'm not going to harp on Katie too much. Like, I, like, I, again, I'm not a therapist, but everybody has their own style. Personally, like right after this, I'd be like, hey, like I would remind them, I would reinforce, like, hey, remember we just talked about I statements. I would say that right after. Kids at all. So you did the same and thing. I think that's normal when it comes to children. It's nope. Such a big she didn't. Thing. If it's like waffling on regular things, like right. getting married shouldn't be something you go in and out of until you're like, you know, I mean, obviously you can think about it on your own, but you shouldn't like. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I hate you. Maybe I love. You. That's not. That's not going to bring us anywhere healthy. Mm -hmm. But like children is something you can talk about. Hopefully, even though you don't think you want anymore, and you're not even a hundred percent sure, but you'd like to have the option. Yeah. And being able to have that conversation should be okay for you to both, if you could both hear each other. Because mm -hmm. my guess is, and I could be completely wrong, it sounds like you start talking, and then you get angry because he'll say something that like is upset or like tip, tips you, and then you shut down, and then you're mm -hmm. just like. No, I do. I, I yeah. Do. yeah, by the way, I hope you all saw the follow-up video I made about Trisha Paytas of why you date, who you date. We talk about those behaviors and like shutting down and stuff. She gets angry, I shut down because she, she, and can't, be, more angry. she can't be spoken to. Yeah. Where do you think the anger comes from? Like, has it always been this way? Yeah, I think I just always had a temper. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I don't know. I think it's just something like That's I can't control. That's funny. When I was her age, I had a temper too. But have you had like... Uh, a rough upbringing or trauma or like as a kid yeah yeah but to me it wasn't traumatic like when I talked to therapists I was like oh well that's the reason this or whatever and it's like when I was going through it all it wasn't traumatic to me and like when I think back about it like I can I can talk about it and like it's not traumatic like I'll tell them about it and I'll be like oh like it was look see how he grabbed her hand right there some of you have asked me to do body language stuff like this, this is good this is good right there like she's talking about a sensitive subject and Jason reached over and grabbed her hand that big of a deal. I get hurt really easily, but I think that's more from like my dad not coming around. You know what I mean? Because my dad lived yeah. in California. Like, when they got divorced, we moved to Illinois. I was born here, moved to Illinois. My dad moved back to California and basically like he saw us sometimes and saw us not. And then my mom had like a different boyfriend like every week, you know? So like I feel like that was like a lot because I didn't like, I didn't get along with my mom. I felt like my dad hated me and like all that stuff like that. So I think that's it. And people like leaving me is a huge thing. Mm -hmm. And it's always been. So. That might be why people like suspected borderline personality disorder. Mm -hmm. Oh! Is definitely part of it. And so you like develop it. It's not what you're born with, borderline personality. I, I mean, I don't. Oh, Trisha, <laughs> Trisha, Trisha, baby girl, baby girl, baby girl, Trisha. Okay, you guys, you guys. This is why I tell you guys to learn about your brain and learn about your diagnosis and learn about like. I, I don't know. It just it just seems like Trisha's wasted a lot of time in therapy. Like, there's no there's no reason that she shouldn't. I don't know, and like, and, and I'm sorry, like this, I, I don't mean to come off mean or anything, I, I like, but you guys, if you get a diagnosis, like research it, understand it, like, 
Same thing with like a physical diagnosis. If a doctor diagnoses you with some illness, like research it, learn about it, understand it, know what's going on. Like you have to, you have to, like this is your, especially when it comes to mental illness, like this is your well-being. Like this is everything to you. This is everything. It's how you interact. It's how you work. It's how you interact with your, your family, your friends, your kids, all that stuff. Like understand your diagnosis, please, please. I made a video, if any of you want to talk, uh, check it out, I made a video, what causes borderline personality disorder. Somebody go tweet it at Trisha right now. Go tweet out my video that says what causes borderline personality disorder. Tweet it out to Trisha and maybe she'll read some of the books I recommend. When did you develop it? Everybody has different thoughts on this. Uh, um, but I believe it's born out of trauma mostly. Uh, and that's not saying, but I think that trauma, I think people think trauma has to do with big things like wow. Big mm -hmm. But it can also be like a lot of little things, like dad not being around, maybe parents fighting a lot. Unlike board, like bipolar disorder, borderline personality disorder is like episodic within a day, meaning like an episode of like feeling really energized, really good, really excited, and then like super depressed, super angry, super mm -hmm. agitated, and then back we go. And that can mm -hmm. be like, I don't know, five or six times a day. Where bipolar disorder isn't as quick. I mean, most people, not people who are, now I'm being like really, but like cyclothymic, I mean, they like cycle quickly. But even then, it's like once a week or so they'll have mm -hmm. something. So, just considering like the timeline of it is usually as a therapist how you would like tease that out to figure out what it is. And I'm not saying you have any of those. Things. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm right. just saying that like that's kind of that's probably why you've had those different diagnoses in that. But I, the thing is, is I don't know if this has to do with it or anything. But even when I'm like being like mean, I used to be so mean and stuff. Like I can be like verbally like abusive, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, like I know I'm doing it. Like I'm not like unaware. Like. Yeah, and like, I don't know if that's an awkward laugh he just did, but yeah. I'm like, oh my God, like I cannot control it. And I feel so bad, like within like a few hours, I like apologize. I'm like, I'm so sorry. So by the way, this is for any, anybody out there who has lived with or dated someone who has borderline personality disorder, like listen to what uh, Trish is saying. Like there's a misconception, there's a myth that people with BPD don't feel bad about what they're doing. Like they mix it in with like, you know, sociopath and stuff like that. No, people with borderline personality disorder feel awful. Like, they feel bad about what they're doing. Like, they feel really bad. And, like, that's where a lot of, like, self, uh, self-hatred self and things like that come from. You know what I mean? Like, I feel yeah. bad about it, but, like, I don't know what that is. I think that's just anger. <laughs> it could be, but anger comes out of hurt. So, yeah. like, that's, I mean, I was even an angry kid. Like, I was, like, I could be super mean to people. And it was because I needed to process through, like, stuff I was going through because I was feeling hurt and I was feeling, like, ignored. And what do you suggest when we run into a situation where we're arguing and she's been set off? There's a couple things. First, like, if I have homework for you where I need you to try to pay attention to how it feels for. Even using instances where you've already blown up, like, if you, once you've cooled down, Think back to like when was it triggered? Like she, she, she'll say, it might have been weeks before. She'll say the most. Yeah. She'll say like the most hurtful thing to me, and then I'm like, and then I go, I'm done. That's yeah. it. Never talking to you again. I was taking care of my kids the other day, and, she, and Trish was here, and we were like having a hard time like deciding what we were gonna do. One kid wanted to do one thing, one kid wanted to do another. I'm sorry. I'm gonna pause it real quick just because I was trying to see if Katie would bring it up. The only, the only, um, the only symptom Katie brought up about borderline personality disorder, which I'm surprised about is that she talked about the fear of abandonment okay uh borderline personality disorder is a lot about dysregulation with uh emotions right and that's why people with bpd get very very angry they say very very hurtful things because when they feel that like it just turns into this like uncontrollable rage right that they regret afterwards the second thing that i'm gonna say though is um see what katie said it's easier said than done, okay? Like, catch yourself. Notice when you're getting angry and stuff. This is why you practice mindfulness, right? Like, you meditate when you don't want to meditate, right? Because what you're doing is you're training your brain to be more present and aware of emotions. Like, emotions usually just don't come out of nowhere. Emotions build up. Sometimes they build up over, like, five seconds. Sometimes they're building up all day. But when you train your brain to acknowledge those, that's how you start noticing that you're getting triggered before you blow up. But, but... The other thing that um, is very good, there's a there's a video out there, and it's like calling off the emotional attack dogs. I highly recommend, if you're watching this, go find that video. It was on uh, Big Think, uh, that YouTube channel, and it's with a psychiatrist, and it says calling off the emotional attack dogs. And he has a great 
great journal idea. Maybe I'll do a video about it. But you write down all the situations that upset you throughout the week. Then you go back through and you circle all of the, uh, the ones that had something in common. And then you kind of isolate your own triggers, right? So I highly recommend you check that out. Well, so then that's when I made plans. Whatever. It's like not a huge deal or whatever. So but she, she went to go to the recording studio. In my mind, which was like, oh, that's really good. Like, that's something that I would want to do. Like, work on an album. That sounds awesome. Like, go do it. Definitely. And I'll take care of my kid, which is my responsibility. And she looked at it more like, oh, like, I was trying to get rid of her. Well, as soon as I left, he's like, because oh, we're going to Disneyland now. And I was like, okay, because it was so tense. By the way, you left out this part because he's also... I mean, he's been diagnosed bipolar. He's also can flip. Like, you see how she had to like, not often, toss that in? He, does, he gets so angry, too. And you know you can get raging. So that morning, he was just not. He knew he was grumpy. Still going back to the you language and not the I language. Like, Katie should be nipping that in the butt. Like, man. Like, again, everybody has their own style. And I don't know. But you got to you gotta nip that. Like, if I just told you something, like... Hell, I do this with my son too. Like if I just taught somebody something and they don't, you know, like you got to train the behavior. You got to train the behavior. Like right there, right there, you sh sh Katie should be reinforcing like one of the tools she just gave them, you know? Like there's no reason why at five minutes, like she mentioned it and then like we're almost, I don't know, 15 minutes in and they've done it over and over again and she's not stopping it. Yeah, he was like, miserable he even said like i was you know like he had the worst weekend ever like you said that on the podcast and then you went to bar and then you were happy so he was like miserable all well, day the day before the fight we had and, no you were miserable in the morning babe when i was still here okay so both of you get angry but he, you might have a longer fuse but yours might be worse when, if you're like my brother my brother's like that'll take him forever to get pissed off and then like he's mad you're like ever gonna leave yeah that's him so <laughs> bad yeah so both of you need to recognize the symptoms earlier like, that's something that I feel like we should all be working on is, like, noticing before. And I know it feels like it's, like, boom. Like this I'm going to tell you one of my favorite quotes, okay? Everybody listen. If you can't, if you can't recognize it before, or no, no, no. If you can't reflect before, reflect during. If you cannot reflect during, reflect after. And it is scientifically proven to train your brain to start catching the behavior before it happens. But it's important that we reflect on it. Again, Meditate, practice mindfulness, go download an app. It'll help you catch these things before they happen. But yeah, Katie's absolutely right. Yeah. But if it is that way, then we're going to have to find when you know it's happening. Like whatever those first symptoms are when you're like that thought when all of a sudden you switch to be like, oh, you kidding? Then we're going to have to implement some tools. So like that's we try to get like the whole goal of therapy in my mind is like getting space, space between a thought or an emotion and an action. That's free what it enterprise is key to America's economic growth. Dean Heller supports. Ah, Dean, get out of here. Like, yeah, um, something that I was talking about with that video calling off the emotional attack dogs. Um, Tristan, remind me to link that in the description. Text me right now. Say link the video for uh, calling off the emotional attack dogs. I'm going to put it down in the description. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to create space between the, the trigger and the behavior. Okay, that's all meditation does. Meditation is scientifically proven to strengthen the brain's ability to have impulse control, okay? So like, this is why I love talking about the science behind this stuff because so many things in therapy are easier said than done. So like, I try to explain to people, like there is scientific research that says, over time, this will get better just by do th you doing this. Like over time, it's scientifically proven that if you eat better and exercise, you will lose weight. Same thing with meditation. Mad, totally fine to be mad. Scream in your car, throw things, I don't care, but yeah. like not at other people like yeah. on your own. Um, or find something to calm you down. Both of you. By the way, this is something I teach clients. I say, rather than yelling at your loved one, I was like, call me and yell at me. So like Katie's saying, like, take it out somewhere else. <laughs> Usually, like what I teach people is the brain just wants to get it out, but our brain gets tricked into thinking that we have to get it out at that person. And that's not the case, okay? That's not the case. Vent to other people. Do you guys know how many angry videos I haven't made just because I vented it to Tristan? You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to do it at that person. So I, I hope you guys under, don't, don't blow up on me. But if you guys want to, send me DMs, send me emails. I recommend just journaling. Sometimes just writing all this, all your anger and thoughts on paper. The brain just like lets all this anger out of the cage. I have a feeling you probably feel it. You might be 
able to notice when your fuse is lit before you're going to blow up, but yours might be like, bloop, you know? Yeah, I feel like it is, like, triggered by, like, something, because, like, because I react so, like, emotionally, like, quickly. Mm -hmm. I don't let things, like, build up, so I don't, like, think of, like, if something's bothering me, but it's always, like, I don't know. It sounds like it's more to do with, like, inclusion and connectedness. To yeah. People. So, like, including her and things and feeling right. like part of something that is important to you. Where for you, I don't, I'm not as, I'm not as sure. What set you off last time? She just goes to the most awful place. She just says, like, really, really hurtful things. What about in the past? Like, like right there, I'd say use an I statement. Right? Okay. So, he said she goes to a really awful place. She says really hurtful things. I would say, you know, the other day, you know, this happened and I felt really hurt. Right? Like, like, I don't know. Come on, Katie. You're better than this. Songs, Trisha, like, what are other situations that have helped me to set me off? I think most of the time in the past, I was, like, just frustrated with myself. Okay, there we go. I used to do stuff that I didn't want to do. When I was married, I would, that would, like, make me, make me upset or whatever. Mm. Mm -hmm. So when you feel like your control is taken away? Yeah, or just, like, my own, like, I'm not, like, making my own decisions or, like. This I'm is real stuff. Mm -hmm. Which I feel that way. I was just going to say, it sounds like, in like this whole outside perspective, but like yeah. it sounds like in a way, like a lot of things that are set up for you even now yeah. are still. Yeah. See, like, even though I'm critiquing some of Katie's stuff, like, um, Katie, Katie's a good therapist, in my opinion. Katie's a really good therapist. I like, what I like about what Katie's doing is that, like, she she's careful about what she says. Like, you notice that she does these little breaks of, like, just from an outside perspective, or I'm not diagnosing you. You know what I mean? She throws those things in there, and I think that's important. That way. It's, I, my whole life is set up to Yeah, because like even the people. children thing, yeah. not, this is, we love your kids, like, it's yeah, not of course. the same, but like, that even takes, it's about them. Like, you're like, I'm doing the things, I'm like, that's my responsibility. Yeah. I have to do this. It's not really about you, it's about them. Yes. Maybe Trisha is like the only place that you hope you can still do what you want and have control, maybe? I don't know what other areas um, are like you I mean, to, maybe it's better if I say it this way. Like, are the, what area of your life do you feel like you have the most control? Yeah, it's the one I don't have. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, that's like it, it's uh, it's almost like I, if I'm not filming or, or working, I'm I'm like completely lost. So, is there other things she could do to make you feel better, like more in control? You know, like she she like she does a really good job at like being like, oh, you don't have you don't. You don't have to stress. You don't have to work so hard, and don't worry about it. She's really good at that. It's just my own thing that I should just probably get over it. Well, I, I don't like that. Like, just get over it. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Because my life is. Good. Yeah. Like, don't don't minimize like your reality and your you know you know what I mean. Like, acknowledge it. But <clears throat> I think just like I've mentioned in other videos, I think. Uh, I think Jason lies to himself a lot. I think Trisha lies to themselves a lot. That's why I always tell you guys self-awareness you know like he was just this whole section right here he's talking about her being controlling and then like this is by the way this is from like the client perspective like he's talking about her being controlling and you know and he feels like he's not in control and you could tell that this is something i talked about this in one of my videos the other day this is something that he's carried over with him from his past relationship and it's something that triggers him like for example like I've had past relationships where, you know, um, a, a woman told me how to be a parent and that really got on my nerves, you know? And like, that's something like Tristan does a great job. She doesn't tell me how to parent. Sometimes we talk, you know, Tristan helped raise her brothers. She helps uh, her little cousin and she has some great insight into kids, but she never like tells me how to parent. Like that's something that triggers me. But I don't know. I don't think right now Jason's like addressing it. It seems like like, this is one of the problems that couples have. They, they like, say it. They just do a little quick, like, think. They, like, do a little pop. They just stick it a little bit, and then they dial back, and they don't finish the rest of that conversation and fully, like, come to some closure with it. Going by, and I'm, like, spending, yeah. like, my downtime, like, feeling much sleeping. Sleeping, or, like. Or, You've been sleeping a lot lately. Or, like, being, like, oh, I should be going. Oh, like, just, like, either. Yeah, like, I should be working. Kind of, like, pick your poison. Yeah. Like, am I either sleeping all day, or am I, like. Right, or like, so let's say it's the time when, when I'm with my kids. That time, like, I'm enjoying it with them, but I'm also like, gotta make the baby, like, gotta. Yeah, I, I can relate. Yeah. I can relate. Worried it's all gonna blow up tomorrow. Yeah, that's the only times I do get angry are those like times. Other than that, I mean, I feel like we do really well. Like the last blow up was, yeah. Wait, what? What? Like they edited it weird there. Like that's the only time she really blows up. Like, I don't understand the context, but because they cut it. That was the dating thing. That was it. I mean, those are the three big books I know of. 
<laughs> Stop it! Stop it! Stop it, Trisha! Stop it right now! Hold on, hold on. Does Jason co-sign her BS right now? Does co does Jason co-sign her BS? We've broken up before over like stupid things. Like I feel like we don't really like fool with each other. Like because like I feel like we have a good relationship. Yeah, figuring out. I, I don't like the cuts. I do not like the cuts in this video. Okay, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like, so so what's a major blow up, right? So in Trisha's mind, I'm wondering what her major blow up means. Does that mean breaking things, throwing things, getting physically, you know, whatever it is. And I don't know. I'm just I'm just giving examples, right? But they like I I don't watch Trisha or Jason really, but I've seen I, I watch David Dobrik, and like they talk about how they've broken up or they got into a big fight, and you know, and, and I don't care how much you guys want to say uh, it's all staged, like you could get a pretty good like barometer of that, but like I don't think like if Trisha's breaking, if these two are breaking up every other week, like you can't minimize that and say, oh well, that wasn't a major blow up. We just break up over stupid things. Like that needs to be addressed. That needs to be addressed. You know, what sets both of you off, like just being aware, like even if it's just like notes in your phone or journaling, I mean, I like to journal personally, but not everybody likes that. <laughs> but even just noting like how it feels in your body, like for me, if I'm getting hurt, mindfulness. I swallow a lot, I think it's like, I just end up like me swallowing my feelings. That's what I imagine. Did you do that for me? But then I start to get angry because then I'm frustrated because I feel bad. Because even though it feels like you have a really short fuse, I have a feeling it's, there's certain buttons like connectedness, um, knowing that he's going to be there for you security trust for you it might be like no one considers you you're doing everything for everybody else like when those buttons are pushed you know just paying attention and then recognizing like you should text like tell each other what those buttons are so you know so yeah you know. like i think like the other day i said something like she was here in the morning but i said something like okay well let's get you out of here and she had like she had like all these costumes and stuff and she took it as like i want to get you out of here because I always feel like that when I stay at this house. Because even with his kids and everyone was just sitting around doing nothing and he wasn't making a decision as like a dad being like, we're all going to Disneyland. Or, well, like, you know, well, okay, I'm saying though, I always feel like I should be not here. Like, I always feel unwelcome. Feel welcome. Even like the other night, I was like, should I leave? Should but I stay? Like, I'm not. Welcome. But that's not how it, it's be just making sure that right. that is necessary. Yeah, good, good interruption there, Katie. Favor and let him know, like, when, not in the, the moment, right. but like, even now, like, what could he do so that you know you're welcome? And if you did, if you did say that to me at the shop for an, and like kind of verbalize your feelings, that would help. And I'll try to do it too. You know, yeah, like, like, I, I, I'm, guilty, I'm guilty like I'm of it welcome, too. But I feel like this is the best relationship I've ever had, except for that. Then I'm just like, well, maybe he doesn't want to be with me. Maybe like there's like a reason he's not. You know what I mean? That's the only thing that like. Other than that, yeah, I really have. Yeah, I have like zero complaints because he's like really nice, really forgiving, like takes care of me. So it's like it's a really good relationship. But I'm like, maybe it's not real. Maybe he doesn't like want to be with me long term. I don't know. That's the only thing, other than that, other than, like, literally, I don't know what else we fight about. Or maybe we do, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. There's just moments where I'm like, you know, there's things, there's things that I don't like, you know? With me? Yeah. I'm not sure, like, there's things you don't like with me. I couldn't all. tell you one other thing besides that that I have an issue with you. Uh, here it goes. Look, yeah, Katie almost like, got a little uncomfortable right there. Like, ugh, gets awkward. Like what? I don't know. Like, you will You don't tell me that. You've never once said that to me. What was I wearing? I don't even remember what you said. I don't know. Or what it was. I had on something that was, like, revealing. You've never told me that. What yeah, else? I mean, I have. I've said, I'd like, or I've said, like, with my friends, like, you know, like, put your clothes on. Or if I walk in and, like, you have, like, no clothes on in front of my friends or something, you know that I'm sexy. You also say it jokingly on a vlog to David, so I didn't know that was an actual issue. I mean, when the camera's not on, I'll literally be like, put some clothes on. You don't say that. I do. I mean, if, well, that's, if she gets angry too, I find people when we're angry, we don't remember things because yeah. we're like, Bleh, we're just maxed out. Yeah, there's actually some science behind that too, everybody. But if that is an issue. She's not angry at I this point. Then, yeah, I always thought that was like, I literally thought it was a joke because obviously I'm like a very yeah, addressed well, that. But I didn't know. I told you so. Okay, so. Sometimes I get it. it sometimes I get up to me. She's usually pretty good at I it. I always, yeah, that's why I'm like so shocked at what I'll like, talking or like, about. Or, always, or like, she know, like, we'll go like to her house and she'll have like no clothes on at the house. Like she'll have some clothes on. This, I think yeah. it's almost like sweet because it's like, no, you're you're mine. I don't right. want everybody else to to have access to what I have access to. I get it, but also that's like, if you knew that about me, you knew I post news, and you that's know that's I dress that's sexy, that's and like, I know, I know. So it's okay. Yeah, it's not really fair, is it? Well, I don't know. It's kind of weird. It'd be it's like, like me trying to change you. Um, comedian and being like, why are you on the road? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, but I know. Maybe every so often, you can do him a favor. 
I mean, but most of the time yeah. you just do you. I do wear a lot of like t-shirts. I always have like your t-shirt on and like sweatshirt. I mean, like I can think of like two occasions you're talking about, and my boob does fall out because this nipple's higher than this nipple. All right, well, thanks for joining us. <laughs>Wait, was that was that legitimately it? Hold yeah. on, I think there might be more. Thanks for joining us. Go over to Katie's channel and and check out um, all her videos and go watch the series she did with Shane Dawson, which was really good. Also, can I just say that's the other confusing thing? He says he doesn't like it, but he'll like take all my nude pictures for me. So it's like I'm so confused. Do you support me? But you also don't support me. I should I should do a video about that. Oh, anyways, everybody. Dean Heller. Uh, ah! All right. Um, yeah. My final thoughts on that. I I don't know. It was first off. Usually therapy sessions are like an hour. Um, I would have liked if they if Katie left them with some like more actionable steps. You know, like before I stop talking with somebody, before I end a conversation with somebody, it's like, what are you doing? Like, what's on this list? of things to do when you leave here, right? Like, what are you going to do? And then I, I say like, okay, so the next time I see you, you're gonna have done this. Like, it's funny because in my live stream earlier, we were talking about uh, like homework and stuff, but that's just how I roll, right? But one one thing I will say about that video, um, in my opinion, in my opinion, this is just me and like how I redirect people. They, they were talking a, about a bunch of surface level stuff, when I talk to people, I redirect them back to the root of the problem. I redirect them back to the root of the problem. Like, it doesn't matter about the Disneyland thing. It doesn't matter about that one time. It doesn't matter about this time. Like, I am here to get to the root of the issue. Because if you get to the root of the problem, you understand why it happens in so many different scenarios. So, like, when people, like, keep trying to trail off and, like, go on all these different paths and tell me all these little side stories, I don't have time for that, okay? I take them right back to the root of the problem. Like, okay, well, let's talk about this. Like, for example, Katie could have kept redirecting them back to fear of abandonment, right? Katie could have kept redirecting them back to insecurities, could have kept redirecting them back to um, anger issues. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it been. Like, those are the root problems. I don't care about all these little tiny things, you know? Get kind of a feel, like for me personally, when I work on this stuff, it's like get kind of a feel for what those surface level things are and then redirect back to the root of the problem. That's that's like probably one of my main gripes. Um, looking back at the whole video now, I think the video started off kind of friendly, like Katie being like buddy buddy Katie. But I think um I think it like she she definitely took the role of a therapist. So just again before I end this video, um I think Katie's a great therapist. I think, you know, her and I have different styles when it comes to working with people with their mental health. Um, so I will say that. Uh, I've had a lot of questions lately about how to find a good therapist and all of that. Like, some people, like, again, I'm not a therapist. Some people love working with me. Some people hate working with me because I do have that kind of tough love. You know, like, I don't let people, like, go in all sorts of different directions. So, you know, figure out what works for you. But, in most cases, from my experience, what I found is like you need people to kind of challenge you more, you know, and not be, I don't know. That's just my, that's just me and my experience. But anyways, let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know in the comment section. Have you ever done couples therapy? What are your thoughts? Um, did couple therapy ever work for you? I, I might make a separate video about couples therapy. In my opinion, both people need to work on themselves and then come together for couples therapy. Like that, that couples therapy session was kind of all over the place because both of them are really neglecting working on themselves. And looking back at some of their other videos, it seems like they were kind of BSing about working on themselves and going to therapy. And like, that's a whole nother topic. But anyways, I love you all. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell. I make a ton of videos about mental health, all right? So anyways, thank you so much for watching. Join our Facebook mental health support group. The link is down in the description below. We are almost 100 strong. And in this Facebook mental health support group, we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. We keep each other accountable. We get to the root of the problem, and it is just an amazing time. So go ahead and click on that link in the description. I love you. I'll see you next time.